So here in John chapter 4, where I start the, the, this passage, a real famous passage with Jesus speaking to the woman at the well. And that's what we're going to be looking at first this morning is his conversation with this, with this woman. And, you know, they have this conversation back and forth. Now, this woman was a Samaritan. And back in, in those days, of course, the, the Jews didn't really have any dealings with the Samaritans. They, they, they had separated themselves. So when the disciples show up with the, you know, they had gone into town, they come back and they see Jesus talking to this woman. They're like, why is he talking to this Samaritan woman? But they don't say anything. But the conversation he has with the Samaritan woman, you know, he says, hey, give me something to drink. And she's like, well, what are you doing, you know, talking to me? I, you know, I'm a Samaritan and you're, you're a Jew. Like, why are, you even, why are you even asking me for this? And he said, you know, if you knew who it was that's asking you to give a drink, he's like, you'd be asking me for a drink. And he goes on about, about the, um, you know, everlasting uh, life, basically. But he talks about, you know, waters. He said, whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And he's trying to explain that, like, you need something of me. Like, I just asked you for water, but what you really need is you need to ask me um, for, you know, for this everlasting life, for the, for the water that's going to... And she doesn't get it, and she's thinking, like, oh, hey, yeah, that's great. You know, how are you going to give me that water? She's just like, you don't have anything to draw the water. You have no bucket. You have nothing to put into the well to get the water. She's like... You know, I'd love to have that water so I don't have to keep coming back here and getting water. I don't thirst anymore. She didn't quite get it. She's still thinking like physically. And then he, um, he goes, well, go ahead and call, you know, call your husband. And she's like, I don't have a husband. And he tells her, you know, of course, well, you've, that's, hey, at least you said that true because you've had five husbands and, the, you know, the guy you're with right now, that's not your husband. And that takes her back. She's like, whoa. She's like, sir, I perceive you're a prophet, you know, like wait a minute, <laughs> you know all this stuff about me. I think you're a prophet. And then she goes on. Now she starts to come around and get it a little bit more, what he's talking about, seeing that he's a prophet. He's not just some random guy sitting at the well just asking her for a drink of water. And, and now she's saying, wait a minute, he's a prophet. And she says, now, so, so now she starts bringing up spiritual things. She's saying, okay, well, you, you know, the Jews, you guys say that you need to worship in Jerusalem. You know, but our father said that we need to worship over here. And... Um, she says, and he, say, he answers her in verse 21, he says, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. He's saying, you don't even know what you worship. You guys think you know what you're doing. You're going up and worshiping this mountain. You don't even know what you worship. He says, for, uh, for salvation is of the Jews. The Jews had the right doctrine, um, well, by and large. I mean, it, I don't even want to say by and large at that time, but, but they were the ones who were, and, you know, it was always in Judea. You remember when the kingdom split? So, Real briefly, and I don't want to get too far into this, you know, I want to get hung up on this, but uh, as a Samaritan, people of Samaria, that was the northern kingdom of Israel. When, when Israel split up into two kingdoms, you had the southern kingdom of Judah and the northern kingdom of Israel. That was after Solomon had died and Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his stead. And in the days of Rehoboam is when the, when the kingdom was split because of Solomon's sins. So he left Judah as the, as the remnant for, for, because of David's sake to, for that line to continue going. And throughout the history of Israel, Judah was, was way more the, the righteous city. That's where the Levites went to. Remember Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, he set up the, the, the idols. And you know, he was worried that the people were going to go back and worship in Jerusalem and then the kingdom was going to be given back to the house of David and all this other stuff. So he set up the false gods. He made priests of the lowest people of the land and, and completely changed the religion. And from that time forward, basically that northern kingdom of Israel was going the wrong direction almost all the time. And there's a few times they'd have a good king or righteous king that would come into power. But by and large, they were not doing what was right by the Lord. They were worshiping Baal and they were doing things the wrong way. Whereas Judah, you know, a lot of the priests and the Levites went, you know, after that split, they moved to Judah. So there was like more of a, of a lighthouse or a powerhouse of, of correct doctrine of people worshiping the Lord. So throughout the history, Judah was, had that place. And, um, you know, Judea, that's where the, where the Jews, the word Jew comes from. It's for people of Judea. And um, Jesus is saying, you know, well, salvation's of the Jews. They had the right doctrine about salvation, at least some of them. Obviously, the Pharisees didn't and the Sadducees didn't, but um, 
He tells her, you know, salvation is of the Jews, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So he says all of this to her, and then, and then the woman answers him and says, well, look, I know that Messiah is coming. So the people of the day, they knew that there was a Christ to come. They knew there was a Savior to come. And she says, well, we know that, I know Messiah comes, which is called the Christ, or which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. So she's saying, well, I, you know, I'm waiting. You know, when Christ comes, he's going to tell us everything. And then he plainly answers her and says, I that speak unto thee am he. He says, I am the Christ, is what he's telling her. So he flat out says it. Now, she has a, a decision to make, obviously, to, to either believe it or not. Now, what do we have to do to be saved? We have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So at this moment, when he says that, she's th that he is the Christ, and he's telling her these things, you know, she, I believe at this moment, she receives him. She believes him. She believes that he's the Christ.